So, um, during today's webinar, uh, I want to show you uh, how you can uh, create a facade scan road uh, if you do not uh, have a 3D model for the building or uh, even uh, the building is not on the Google map. Uh, I guess such uh, situations may happen uh, when you need to inspect a new created building and it's not even present on the map and also might be this scenario can be useful also for inspecting some mines or um, other objects uh, where you, you do not have uh, 3D models and uh, you even may not have uh, accurate enough uh, visual uh, maps for these areas. Uh, we have uh, receiving this uh, questions quite often uh, how to create a 3D model in UGCS. Uh, right now we do not have a solution for it. Um, it's only possible to create a map, two-dimensional map for the area and 3D models may be it will come in future. But uh, right now uh, I'll show you the flight creation and uh, explain all it all in detail step by step. Uh, I will start with the uh, scouting of the area. By uh, this, I am meaning the manual flight with a drone uh, around uh, the building which you want to, to inspect. Uh, as a sample, I will use uh, a building site of our office new. Uh, as you can see, uh, it is not present on Google Maps. Uh, there's uh, just just a field. Uh, I uh, created uh, this flight uh, recently. So to create the flight, I used uh, the BGI drone, and it was connected to UGS, UGCS desktop, and uh, telemetry uh, was recorded during the flight. Uh, it's possible to do the same uh, with uh, any drone supported UGCS, uh, performing manual flight and recording the telemetry. So uh, I'll start the flight and explain uh, what uh, what I was doing and uh, why the flight looks like it's. So uh, first I uh, performed the takeoff to some safe altitude, it's uh, some 10 meters, and then I move uh, towards the building, which uh, is located here. Uh, first I uh, try to find the uh, first wall, uh, first corner, and uh, place my drone perpendicular to the wall I want to scan. Uh, find the actual corner from which uh, I, I want to start the uh, scanning. Uh, so uh, this is the line. Uh, then I move forward uh, to the building. Uh, I used, I was flying uh, in a longer distance intentionally and making these lines. So later when I'm reviewing uh, this telemetry record, I can recognize the place uh, where was changing direction and uh, where I want this uh, flight to go on. Uh, so then I was performing the flight parallel to the wall. Oh, no. Uh, first, uh, yeah. First, uh, uh, I corrected the altitude of the drone uh, based on the obstacles. So I see that uh, it's possible, possible to fly lower. So I descend to seven meters above the ground and uh, proceed to other side uh, of the wall. I hope the zoom is not uh, lagging too much and you can see the image well. So uh, when I reach uh, next side, 
So I stop the drone and uh, move backwards. So I create a, again the line, uh, which then I can uh, recognize. Recognize and see where where would be the point of uh, ending of the line. Uh, then I proceed to the next wall around the corner. Uh, save distance again. Uh, finding the corner. Basically, the, the same uh, action for uh, next wall. Uh, it's it's important just to uh, make this uh, flight forward or or backwards, uh, marking the line, so you can uh, recognize after the flight exactly this uh, position. So uh, after this wall, uh, I noticed that uh, there are some bushes. And I want to fly higher, not want to collide. So after moving backwards, I increase the altitude by a couple of meters. Proceed to the next wall. Uh, here I can go faster. So uh, if you understand that for next wall, I can again decrease the altitude. So I decrease it to some something around seven meters. And proceed to the last wall. Well, now when the uh, location of the walls is fixed, uh, so the next remains uh, altitude uh, of the flight. So uh, I, I stand uh, up. So it's not easy to catch the first try maximum altitude you want. So you go above and then uh, slowly descend. the drone at, at this uh, desired altitude and uh, move forward or backward uh, to mark the line uh, which I want to fly and return home already back. So this is uh, the recording of the telemetry and uh, Next step would be export of this uh, telemetry data. Uh, there are three options for export. Uh, first one is uh, TLM format. It's a uh, format for UGCS. So uh, you can export from one UGCS and import uh, it to some other computer and you can replay uh, with all, all these details. Then uh, export to CSV uh, format. Um, then uh, this data can be used uh, in some other software or, um, oh, and basically, how do you need it? Like a human readable file. And uh, the third option is KML, which uh, I will need because it's standard KML format. So save the file and uh, now I go to mission editor. And here I can import the same KML file. And uh, the route will be automatically created from it. As there are uh, line strings, so it will be a simple waypoint mission, but uh, from different uh, other formats of uh, KML, you can create also area scan photogrammetry parameter. And uh, I hope that in not so distant future, 
uh, it will be possible also to create a facade scan and uh, corridor mapping route. But right now, so I select the drone, and uh, here is the waypoint route from uh, created from this telemetry data. Uh, I will use for the main design uh, a two dimensional object, but uh, I will uh, leave also this route uh, so I can check necessary altitudes. And to, to have it not, in, if I would uh, start to create the, the road uh, when I have on background as a road, uh, it would not be too, too easy to understand where is that road and where is the new road like creating. So I will import the same file as to the object. And here appears just the lines. So now I'm ready to start building the new road. So I'm selecting the same drone which I was flying, but so I'll leave all the default settings. So starting with the first waypoint for the, the location where I will perform the takeoff, probably at the same point where I was flying already. So I know the altitude, 10 meters will be fine for me. And now I can uh, proceed with the facade. S selecting the facade scan tool and uh, putting it in the location where I want to fly. I will create here an additional segment, I will explain it later. So when I have created for say the scan segment, I press enter and it's complete. So I can now create simple waypoint. I will also explain the reason why I'm creating additional waypoints. Right now, I just want to build this facade around the building. So uh, I have created uh, these four walls. Now I can uh, adjust them, check if they are in the locations where I was expecting. So this uh, first is just uh, just placing them where where I want the drone to fly.
Okay, as I assume this is done. So uh, now I can start uh, adjusting the parameters for uh, each segment. Oh, but first I would like to uh, correct this one. Uh, here, uh, it's possible to create a single uh, said, uh, scan segment containing uh, more points. So it's possible to create a uh, like, uh, shape around uh, all around the building. But uh, in this case, I, I want to fly at the close proximity to the building. So I will use additional waypoints. And uh, right now, I will just want to remove this one additional point. So it's selected here. Here I can see that I have three points for said scan. I remove the third one and I get just so it remains only this segment. Uh, to fly safely around the corners, uh, I created a, here is this uh, additional waypoint. And also at the next corner, as this, uh, this third corner, I didn't create it, uh, but I will show how to, how to make it. So uh, now I want to adjust the altitude of uh, let's say scan segment. So the altitude I was flying here was uh, seven meters. So I set a minimum altitude seven meters. Now I want to adjust the overlap of target images I will get. And say I want 60% forward and 60% side overlap. And uh, here uh, I specify uh, actual drone uh, distance uh, to the building. And uh, in this case, those were some seven meters. <clears throat> there are questions uh, coming, uh, what is the safe distance to the building? Uh, answer is not easy. Uh, it depends on altitude on which you need to fly. It uh, depends on uh, how good uh, GPS signal coverage is. But uh, if uh, using standard drone with standard GPS, uh, you can check the drone specification from manufacturer. Uh, standard er error for DJI Mavic Zoom is uh, GPS error is around 1.5 or even two meters. So uh, if I uh, fly at a distance five meters from the building with GPS error, I have remaining uh, safety buffers three meters. Uh, at the speed three meters per second, it's one second to react if something goes wrong. So um, in my case, distance seven meters uh, means uh, I have this buffer around uh, five meters. But uh, I will not fly at, uh, I'll fly with the slower speeds uh, because uh, here in uh, the road, uh, this properties, uh, the road log, uh, you can see that with the current settings, uh, I will have a camera triggering uh, every second. And uh, in Mavic, uh, Mavic Zoom, can trigger normally camera each three seconds only. If it goes faster, uh, it will not be able to store images. And uh, there might be some gap of those images. So uh, I will need to decrease the speed. And when I decrease the speed, so I see again, uh, there are two seconds, so it's still too fast. And now there are two, two options. I can uh, decrease the uh, overlap. So it's being calculated. That should, uh, should give some time. But uh, I think it won't be enough, so I will also decrease the speed 
to 1.5 meters per second. And yes, now I get uh, interval between shots three seconds and it satisfies me. And uh, now uh, the maximum altitude. Now I can check uh, this previous road I created. Here uh, I check the waypoint where I was setting the maximum altitude. So it was. Twenty-five meters. Okay. So I specify here twenty-five meters. Uh, camera attitude uh, action is uh, added by default for facade scan road, and default uh, settings are zero degrees. So uh, camera is facing uh, forward. And uh, automatically is added uh, set camera by time and uh, automatic, also automatic. So the UGCS calculates this uh, triggering interval to meet uh, necessary overlap. So now I proceed with next segments and set the same parameters. Uh, so here I needed a higher altitude. So I specifying here 10 meters above ground. Maximum altitude still remains the same. Uh, the facade scan uh, now has the uh, option that uh, it's following the terrain. And if uh, I have a slope terrain, so it would uh, keep the uh, lines parallel to the ground. So lowest point uh, doesn't, uh, is not less than uh, the specified 10 meters. And if the ground uh, elevation goes up, so the same way will go the facade line. Uh, if you still need uh, straight lines, so they're not uh, changing uh, according to the altitude, but uh, still minimum altitude uh, is like 10 meters, then it's possible to change uh, flight type uh, parameters from straight to safe. And if you select safe, then uh, road will uh, be calculated uh, with the straight lines. But, uh, I can show it uh, later on some more sloppy surface. Here again, seven meters, 25, seven. And uh, of course I can specify different distance for each of these segments. If I had used uh, just one all, all around the building, I would have the option for uh, each side spe uh, specify different. But uh, to get uh, the same uh, resolution of, uh, of the wall, uh, so I need to, to keep uh, the same distance from facade. But uh, I'll leave it to it. so maybe I <laughs> need it in this case. So uh, regarding uh, additional waypoints uh, bet uh, between the segments. Uh, so here you can see that uh, uh, when the one facade scan segment is uh, finished at the top, uh, so it goes, uh, it will continue the next uh, segment from uh, the closest uh, point. If I place uh, this intermediate waypoint to go around the corner, uh, if I place it uh, down here, so the drone will first descend, 
this waypoint and then continue to set a segment. If I place it up here, so it will continue through this waypoint and uh, start from, from the top. Here I also have this additional waypoint. Here I want it to start here at the bottom. And between these two segments, I didn't create a waypoint at the beginning, but I can insert it uh, now. To do it, I need to uh, select the segment after which I want to insert this additional waypoint. So I'm selecting waypoint two and click here. And the waypoint is uh, added. So here's a situation that uh, well, with the overlap, the uh, drone is uh, finishing this segment on the same side where it started and it uh, needs to move to uh, this uh, other segment. If I will, uh, I don't create it, so if I delete it, uh, you can see uh, John goes here in, on a straight line. And uh, if the distance of the Z is closer, it, uh, it might be too close uh, to actual building. So that's the reason uh, why sometimes you would need to create these additional waypoints. So I place it on the safe distance from the building. And uh, I, I see here that the uh, drone ends on the other side on top. So probably I save the battery and uh, add this additional waypoint here at the top. So John's, John goes and just down. So, and this is it. And uh, there's uh, one additional announcement for all webinar participants and also for people who view this uh, webinar in the recording. Uh, if you uh, purchase the perpetual license of UGCS uh, Pro or UGCS Enterprise during next two weeks, uh, we are uh, now offering uh, an online session with a support person most probably that will be me or maybe some somebody other from our team. Uh, in case of UGCS Pro uh, per special license, that will be one hour. In case of enterprise license, that will be two hours. And we will be happy to answer and help you uh, planning, knowing, uh, improving your knowledge in UGCS. Uh, to arrange this, uh, uh, necessary to, to purchase a license and uh, it can be purchased from our website or from our partners. Uh, we'll just uh, need to have the activation code uh, which is purchased during uh, these two weeks. Uh, there, we, we don't know yet how many uh, there will be uh, people who will want, want this so this probably, uh, of course, is uh, limited uh, by our, our staff how many uh, such sessions we can handle. But uh, to be sure, you can, before purchasing, you can contact support at ugcs.com and arrange the time. And we'll happy, be happy to introduce you better with UGCS. So that's all for me today. Thank you very much.